The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss, bringing you a review of a massive new edition of possibly the greatest state-of-the-art orchestration manual, The Study of Orchestration by Samuel Adler. An advanced copy of this book, due to be released in June, made its way to my doorstep here in New Zealand through a great deal of communication between international distributors and book publishers. I want to extend my most heartfelt thanks to the staff of W.W. Norton & Company, who went above and beyond to make sure that the Orchestration Online community would get an advanced look at Samuel Adler's latest edition of his extraordinary text. Before I talk about improvements from previous editions, let's take a look at this edition on its own merits for those orchestrators out there who haven't read any of Adler's work. Simply put, I feel that this is the best, most usable university orchestration textbook in existence. It represents a synthesis of many advances in orchestration education, plus the perspective of a monumentally gifted composer-educator. The latest edition brings Adler's work very cautiously into the arena of internet multimedia education, though not quite far enough, as we'll see by the end of this review. All the same, it's the right direction to take, whether it quite fulfills all the promise of the current state of access to information or not. As many orchestration online students know, I usually recommend Walter Piston's orchestration as a first book for its clear, intelligent, and economical writing. For a whole generation of American university education, it was the most commonly used orchestration text, with Kent Kennan's technique of orchestration a close second. By the 1980s, however, it was clear that a new type of book was needed that would go far deeper into detail about instrumentation and yet provide more hands-on advice about scoring than Piston or Kennan. Enter Samuel Adler. His 1982 first edition of The Study of Orchestration was a brilliant answer to those authors, but had some technical challenges in printing, along with quite a few typographical errors and unclear passages. Adler quickly addressed those concerns with an even better second edition in 1989, along with a package of compact discs that brought many of the examples in the book to life for student listeners. The second edition was really the one that cemented Adler's reputation as a great writer and teacher of orchestration. I and many of my colleagues credit this book as part of our fundamental understanding of the craft, and still keep a copy close at hand for reference. But for Adler, perfection was not enough. A third edition soon followed in 2002, this time with a step toward integrated multimedia. The CD selections were indexed into the text itself, with an additional CD-ROM disc that supplied video demonstrations of orchestral musicians. The text was updated as well, with additional notes and insights in some sections, like expanded descriptions of technique and more advice about scoring. The tone of the fourth edition is set with its preface. The second and third editions had started with some rather self-deprecating observations about Adler's ongoing attempts to perfect his text. But now he's through apologizing. And he doesn't need to either, because he's got nothing left to feel sorry about. This book is the summation of a life's work, and it speaks for itself. The organization of the fourth edition remains the same as in previous editions, representing a very logical series of steps with which to absorb the full craft of orchestration. After a brief essay in historical perspective, the instruction starts with the very scientifically categorized bowed string instruments, what we normally call the string section. Adler runs through the features and techniques common to all instruments in this category, and then examines them individually in chapter three. In chapter five, he takes all of this information and shows how to practically apply it in the art of scoring for string ensemble. Chapter 4 is a bit of a distraction, dealing with harp, guitar, mandolin, banjo, and zither. This information interrupts the flow, and could easily have been relegated to the back of the book as in other texts like Pistons. But I acknowledge Adler's sense of organization in putting this information here, 
however irrelevant to the immediate discussion. If you leave out chapter 4, then the beginning of the book sets the form for the rest of the instrumentation chapters. Overview of section, individual instruments, and then scoring of those instruments in progressively complex combinations as each section is discussed. I think it's all quite brilliantly written and organized, with some caveats about the percussion ensemble chapter. Adler's scientific categorization of the percussion instruments may give the impression that all instruments are equally available and or playable, and is organized by similarities of construction rather than playing technique or frequency of use. It's a small point, admittedly, but one which takes the reader one step further from the perspective of the player, however accurately and clearly described. Part 2 is the real heart of the book, in my opinion, where we see the insights and perspectives of Samuel Adler as a teacher and master orchestrator. Every orchestration teacher has their own special focus of training. For George Frederick McKay, it was clarity and organization of sound groups. For me, it's texture balance and function. But for Adler, it's the acoustic landscape, as he discusses in the section titled The Distribution of Foreground, Middle Ground, Background Elements Within the Orchestra. Though this isn't all he teaches by any means, he does use this way of thinking to work his way through other topics, such as the following chapter dealing with the orchestra as accompanist. From the perspective of a professional orchestrator or career track composition student, the average orchestration text tends to skimp on the scoring and focus mainly on instrumentation. But that's not the case here. While a university course has its limitations of student selection and available time, this text addresses those limitations admirably without compromising Adler's grand vision of orchestration education. Indeed, seeing as how the instrumentation section contains ample introductions to scoring for each section and combination of sections, there's little to complain about, and a strong foundation to be gained if one is really paying attention to his keenly stated advice. You can actually see how the upper outside corners of the scoring pages have been tabbed in black, showing that there's quite a bit more scoring advice here than in many other so-called orchestration manuals. That doesn't mean that I'm in complete accord with everything Adler writes. Orchestration is a craft, not a science, and it leaves a lot of room for friendly disagreement. For instance, I take issue with the notion that the bassoon and oboe are in the same family of instruments. A woodwind family is defined by its approach to playing, not by similarities of construction and sound production. A performer should be able to play any member of the family of their instrument, with some minor adjustment for breadth and size. Therefore, the bassoon is a member of its own family, and so is the oboe, with a slight crossover of the hecklephone, a bass oboe that is often built with bassoon-style fingerings and played by a bassoonist. I also regret the lack in the winds chapters of the incredibly useful overblowing and fingering charts of Piston. To my way of thinking, at least the rudiments of such information should be well known to anyone who scores for these unique and often puzzling instruments. But that is me imposing my perspective onto Adler, and certainly no detriment to his achievement. The review copy I received is a softcover student edition with an inexpensive perfect binding, which may not last too long with constant use. If you feel this will be a permanent resident on your bookshelf, it might be better to order a hardbound copy with a sewn binding that will last a few decades. The pages are also a bit hard on my failing eyesight, with a rather glaring university textbook white, rather than the lovely cream-colored paper of the second edition. Still, there's no doubt that the book is much clearer and more readable than ever. How does it stack up to previous editions? Well, I've been laying out the copies of the second, third, and fourth editions side by side and noticing the differences. The second edition is naturally the most economical in sheer weight of words. The third edition has expanded on many topics with additional information and perspectives. The fourth edition takes these expansions and works them into the fabric of the text more smoothly, while adding more useful thoughts and a final polish to the writing. In fact, overall there's a sense of final reorganization and reshaping of the text. I'd say that this is the most readable and clearest version of the book yet, though I miss the personal touches and asides that Adler put into his second edition. To put it another way, the second edition was very concise, the third edition a bit more sprawling, and now the fourth edition is extremely well polished and a great step forward for the text. And yet, as I mentioned at the start, it doesn't step quite far enough. The step from first edition to second moved forward to the realm of digital recording. From second to third, into the realm of home computer media. The next logical step, from third to fourth, would be into the internet age, 
which has blossomed hugely since the third edition's 2002 release. To Adler's credit, and that of his publishers W. W. Norton, both of whom I greatly admire, the step is a little too tentative and a little too unaware of a vast community of composers who use the study of orchestration and who do not necessarily attend a university. As one of the representatives of that community, I have some advice. Enormous interest could be generated toward the cause of getting this book into the hands of composers who need it, with a bit more internet savvy and presence. For instance, the biggest practical improvement to the latest edition is that recordings of examples and video demos by musicians are now available online, with an access code to Norton's digital resources. But is there one bit of promotion for this feature on their YouTube channel? Even the tiniest of video samples? Not that I could find. This speaks to me of the presumption that anyone with a copy of this book is likely to be a university student who must purchase it because it's assigned. My dear friends at Norton & Company, I don't want you to take this criticism too harshly, but this is an enormous blind spot. There are thousands of composers who read and use Professor Adler's book in their daily work who were never assigned it in class. Most of them are out there on the internet, improving themselves on a daily basis with interaction, communication, and the sharing of resources. They are interested in your book. You should respect their loyalty by giving them enough information to make an intelligent choice about whether to upgrade to the fourth edition or buy it for the first time. I mean, in the most practical sense, even I as a reviewer wasn't allowed to log in and view those videos yet, or even watch a publicly posted sample for review. How does that help anyone? In fact, the whole process of signing in to view these videos presumes that the reader studies at a university. Well, in fact, many serious readers currently don't, and perhaps never will. And yet they'll require the resources Norton provides, and they deserve to get access to those resources with courtesy and acknowledgement as purchasers of the book. So Norton, please change your approach to reflect that. There is an enormous community out there, and it's time you paid your respects to it. But despite all that, especially my frank disappointment at not being able to review the digital resources, I still feel that this book is the best of its kind, and that this latest edition is the best one yet. I felt the third edition was a little bloated and didn't really say too much more than the second edition, but this new fourth edition is extremely usable and well-ordered, and I enjoyed reading the improvements in many familiar passages. My congratulations to Samuel Adler for his achievement here, and my gratitude as well. I know that I speak for a lot of viewers too when I say that his efforts have helped make us into accomplished orchestral composers. Thanks ever so much, Mr. Adler. You've made a huge difference to the world of music.